We change our mind dozens of times a day. I want a cup of coffee. No, I think I've had enough coffee for today. On second thought, I think I'll have another cup of coffee. One more is not going to hurt. Let's eat Chinese. No, let's cook something at home. I think I'll retire this year. Oh, no, I just got a promotion and a raise. I'm going to stick it out one more year. Stephen Wright said, change is inevitable, except from vending machines. We're continuing our fellowship class, uh, Sunday morning Bible studies, and our topic is questions you've always wondered. And today's question is, how do you explain God changing his mind? Well, that's a good question. There are seemingly contradictory verses in the Bible about that. Let me read a couple sample ones. The first one from Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. And in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6, we read this verse. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Let's examine this idea of repentance, how it relates to God, how it relates to man, and just what this means. How do we explain that God changes his mind? Well, man repents. He turns from sin. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 21 says, I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. This verse is in reference to a false prophet in the church at Thyatira. She is guilty of some kind of a serious sin, which sin we're not really sure. Um, it's possible that she was guilty of adultery or fornication, but in the Bible, and particularly in the book of Revelation, fornication is often a code word for a spiritual sin, uh, usually teaching false doctrine. Regardless, here is the result of her sin in Revelation 2 and verse 22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. To repent, in this sense, means to turn from one direction and go into another, or to stop sinning. Now, when you turn from something, you also turn toward something. So if you're facing north, then you can turn west, or you can turn east, or you can turn south. You have to turn someplace if you're turning away from someplace. Biblical saving repentance turns away from sin. Acts chapter 26 and verse 20 is a sample verse that tells us about turning away from sin and turning toward God. This is Paul appearing before King Agrippa. He's given his testimony. We're going to jump right in the middle of it. And he says he declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and through all, all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles, and here's what's important to us, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. So they are to turn and go in another direction. They are to turn away from sin, and they should turn toward God. Before they repented, they had devoted themselves to themselves. They had devoted themselves to pleasing themselves, and of course, the opposite of that is to oppose God. And they devoted themselves to sin. After repenting, they turned away from their sin, and they turned toward God. So now instead of being devoted to themselves and to sin, they're devoted to God, and they do things that please God. As the last of the verse says, turn to God and do works befitting repentance. Now let's look at some times that God has repented. God repented of making the human race. We read this in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6, but we'll read it again. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. God repents of making the human race. It says that he is sorry. Now, sorry often implies a passive admission of error. 
That is, I'm sorry I bought that car. I'm really sorry I bought that car. Sometimes it admits a mistake. I'm sorry I yelled at you. But it can also mean sorrowful. I'm really sorry that you lost your job. But when you are so sorrowful, you're not admitting any kind of an error. I'm just sorrowful. I'm sorry you lost your job. So God can be sorry. And God can be grieved. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Grieved, of course, means to be hurt. She grieved over the loss of her husband. She had pain over the loss of a relationship. So grieving is the emotional response to the loss of some or part or all of a relationship. God repented. He was sorry that he made the human race. God was also sorry that he made Saul king of Israel. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, we read in verse 35 that Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Now, what does it mean to regret? That's a, that's a tough word, really, if you think about it. So I looked it up in the Oxford English Dictionary, and it means to be sad, it means to be repentant, it means to be disappointed. Now, God can be sad. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So he can be sad, but God cannot be disappointed. To be disappointed implies that you are unaware of the future. For instance, if I say I was, in a, I was disappointed that I did not get that job, I am suggesting that I didn't know that I would not get that job. I didn't know the future. But God knows the future, so he cannot be disappointed. There are some archaic ways of understanding this word, and that's good for us because the English translations of the Bible are pretty archaic sometimes. The archaic meaning of regret means to feel sorrow. God who grieves can definitely feel sorrow. So God's response to Saul's performance as king was to be sad, perhaps to be grieved, to be sad because Saul had wasted an opportunity to do some amazing things for God as king. So let's explain this apparent contradiction of God repenting. There are different kinds of repentance. Did you know that? There are three kinds of repentance, at least. One means to change direction. People do change direction. They turn from sin and they turn to God. God changes direction too sometimes. He displaced Saul and replaced him with David. Now David's the new king, so God's changing direction. You can also change your mind. People must change their mind if they repent unto salvation. They decide not to oppose God, and they decide to serve God. But God cannot change his mind because he knows the future, and he's perfect. Changing your mind implies that either the future was a surprise, or you made a mistake. And the, the future is never a surprise to God who knows everything, and he never makes a mistake because he's perfect. So there's changing direction, there's changing the mind, and then there's sorrow. People are sometimes sorry. They apologize when they are wrong, and they feel bad when they hurt. God can be sorry too. He feels bad when you hurt, but he never apologizes because God is never wrong, and God is always perfect. So let me summarize this briefly, what we're talking about. God's repentance is never a result of error or imperfection. It can be a change of direction. It can be a feeling of sadness. But God is perfect. He never needs to change his mind. God is perfect. We frequently need to repent because we are not perfect. Now let me remind you that this whole series of lessons is based on 
questions that you ask, questions that you always wondered about. So if you will text me, email me, somehow get me a question, then I will try to answer that during this series. May God bless you this week.